mamas to be you're watching R&B fam I'm Bianca Renee and I'm an experienced mom of a whole seven weeks now which gives me just enough experience to tell you exactly what you need in your hospital bag this bag right here is restocked with everything that I used on my delivery day and this bag first of all is from llama mama company how cute is this mommy bag they also have daddy bags if you guys want to get them for the daddies but I'll make sure to put a link in the description box I found this on Instagram but that was adorable you know being a new mom we get excited about these kind of things so I'm gonna tell you everything that I brought to the hospital everything I didn't use at the hospital and things that I wish that I remembered to bring to the hospital so let's get started let's open up my huge Mary Poppins of a bag so I could show you what I took to the hospital. And I will admit, I've already taken everything out of here and I washed it and I put it back in the bag for the sake of this video. So let's grab this. This is all of my makeup. Did I use it? No. Now granted, if my water would have broke in the middle of the night, I might have gone to the hospital with no makeup and then maybe if I had some downtime, I'd apply a face but because I was induced, I had all the time in the world to wake up, shower, put on my makeup, and just arrive to the hospital fully glam. So since I already had on my makeup, I never used my makeup. But I will admit that I purposely packed my Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation. This is a super long lasting foundation, especially if you have oily skin. So I knew it was going to be a long day, so I wore this from when I got to the hospital, which was 12 noon, and then I gave birth a little bit after midnight. And then I will admit, I'm gonna keep it real, I did not get up to wash my face after having a baby. I slept in my makeup. I know, you should never do that. Don't tell my esthetician, but that's what happened. So if you wanna be you know, a little bit more diligent than me, I would suggest bringing some makeup wipes so you can at least wipe it off while you're in bed. I just went to sleep. So then because it was midnight by the time I woke up and guests were visiting me the next morning, and it was the same morning, I still had on my foundation and it still looked good. So I kind of rocked the same face for like two days and I did not reapply with my makeup. So bring your makeup if you think you're going to wear it, but you might not even use it like me. The next thing in here are pajamas. These are the most comfortable pajamas that I own. I got them off of Amazon. I'll make sure to put all the stuff that I use in my Amazon store, which I'll link below. But it's this very comfortable button down pajama set that comes with these very comfy pants. They're nice and stretchy, so nothing's too tight around your waist, especially if you're someone that gets a C-section. And I like that it has the buttons going all the way down because now we're learning how to breastfeed and you wanna do skin to skin. So that way you can just unbutton it and voila, you are ready to go versus trying to lift up a t-shirt or just not have a shirt on at all. So I wear these every day at home now and I just absolutely love them. A robe. I don't think I wore this. I wore this for like 10 seconds going from my shower to grab my clothes, but that was it. I really could have just used a towel, but I will say that I wear this every single day now that I'm home and breastfeeding. So get a nice thin robe for after the hospital, for show. A towel, I did use a towel. I did take a shower at the hospital. So I got in Friday at noon and then I gave birth a little bit after midnight Saturday and then I left Sunday morning so that Saturday evening is when I finally took my first shower and I did use my own towel versus those very thin ones at the hospital but they do have a towel you don't need to bring one but I was glad I had my own nursing bras definitely bring a nursing bra especially if you're planning on trying to breastfeed I would say wear one to the hospital and then pack one as well these are also from amazon they're super comfortable and this is all you're literally going to wear for the rest of your life <laughs> no but this is all i wear every day now i had three of them initially i just bought like five more because this is something that i wear every day this is the new mommy wardrobe so you will need some nursing bras if you're planning on breastfeeding so maybe buy three make sure you could do it see how everything goes in the breastfeeding department and if everything's going well stock up my blankie i brought this very comfortable large pineapple blanket because i wasn't sure if it was going to be hot in the hospital 
or cold but for me it was really cold and I did notice that when you get an epidural sometimes you can kind of get like the chills so I was so cold and the hospital blankets are just thin and don't really do anything so I was so glad that I brought my own blanket and did you see this in our delivery video which you guys can go watch if you haven't seen it yet but this was used the entire time at the hospital my own satin pillowcase of course for those of you that follow me on my beauty channel Bianca Renee today I tell all my curly girls that you have to sleep on a satin pillowcase and things don't change just because you're having a baby so yes as many of you noticed I did bring my own satin pillowcase so my curls would not be frizzy during delivery good old adult diapers these are always discreet boutique underwear that have a built-in pad I was told that these are gonna be the new you know savage Fenty for me but I actually did not wear these because the hospital gives you everything you need for the whole postpartum pain that you're going to experience if you have a vaginal delivery so what the hospital gives you is these disposable underwear and they give you like the pads and they give you like spray and they give you everything you need to help down there so I just wore these and I preferred these over everything that you could possibly use so I know some women love these little diapers maybe over when you get home but I did not need them at the hospital because they gave me these instead so with that being said I did bring some you know very cute full coverage granny panties but after vaginal delivery I did not see normal underwear for a while it was just pads and those diapers so these also did not get worn at the hospital. By the way, if you're watching and you're someone that had a C-section, please comment below and let me know what was important for you to have in your hospital bag when you gave birth, just so we can have everything covered in the comment section. A scrunchie! Always bring a scrunchie. I didn't want my hair down during delivery. I wanted it to be up and away because you're like pushing and you're sweating. So you want your hair just up and out of your face. So that's why you should always have a scrunchie on you. Socks, little socks with the little rubbers on the bottom. These aren't mandatory. I didn't do any walking once again because of the epidural. But if you are going to be walking around the hospital because you're trying to like get the baby to come down or I don't know what, you don't want to slip. So it's nice to have the little rubbers on the bottom so that you don't slip. But many hospitals also provide these socks for you. So if you don't want to bring them, you'll probably be fine at the hospital. An alternative option to socks would be to bring your own slippers. Because I didn't do any walking, these did not really get worn. Maybe for two seconds from the bed to the bathroom. Or I had on socks, one or the other. But you probably don't need both. But feel free to bring whatever makes you feel comfortable. I got these socks and these slippers also off of Amazon. A hospital gown. Now this is for those of you that are extra like me. My friend who's a nurse, shout out to Nob, told me, ew, don't wear the hospital robes. Those are gross. I'm gonna order you a cute one. So she ordered me my very own hospital robe off of Amazon, which looks like this. So it is much cuter than the normal hospital robes and it does open completely in the back so they could do what they got to do and lift it up and you know give you your epidural whatever you need to do like a normal hospital robe funny enough a lot of the nurses were so confused as to why i had my own robe they're like well it's gonna get dirty are you sure you want to wear it and i was like yeah i bought it for this exact moment i'm never gonna wear it again if i don't wear it today but then you know as more nurses came in i was getting so many compliments for my cute robe but they were right it did get very dirty it got kind of bloody so then after everything they had to just like put it in a bag for me to take home to wash so if you're gonna take pictures or film like i did it is a much cuter option totally not mandatory just for us that are a little you know extra want to be cute at all times but if you want you i would suggest maybe wearing the ugly hospital one during delivery that way if it gets all messy they could toss that one and then you could put on your cute one for photos with the baby afterwards so keep that in mind my toiletry bag all right let's see what's in here this is from base shay mitchell's cute brand this was actually a gift from not your mother's thank you and inside it actually comes with a mirror and i left the mirror in here on purpose because i have heard that many women like to bring a mirror so they actually can see the birthing experience happen in real time because if you think about it 
we can never see what's going on down there because it's like literally impossible. So if you want, you have the option to having someone hold a mirror there so you could see it all go down. I don't know if I wanted that. It sounded weird before everything, but now it's like, hey, what did that look like? Obviously bring your toothbrush, your toothpaste, your deodorant, your face wash, um, moisturizer, your skin does get a little bit more dry after pregnancy, I've noticed, at least for me. Chapstick. Chapstick was probably the number one thing that was recommended for me to bring when I asked you guys on Instagram. If you don't follow us, follow us at RNB Fam and my personal page is at Ms. Bianca Renee. But I was like, what's the big deal about chapstick? But your lips do get very dry. I had to get oxygen during my delivery, so that oxygen mask was just really pumping air, making it extra dry. So I did use my chapstick. I brought my favorite mousse by Not Your Mother's Curl Talk, and I also brought a little bit of gel for my edges. Baby hairs did not get laid, and I did not do my hair, so you could bring hair products if you want. I was not about to do my hair after all that. I also brought some nipple cream, which will be your best friend those first couple weeks after delivery if you are breastfeeding, but the hospital also gives you some, so I did not need to bring this, but I did use it once I got home. A super long charger. You definitely cannot forget to bring your phone charger. You're gonna be taking a bunch of pictures and videos and people are gonna be texting you wanting to know updates if your water broke, how many centimeters you're dilated. You can choose if you wanna be bothered with your phone or not. But if you have a super long one, you could prepare yourself to have the outlet be far from you just in case it doesn't reach your hospital bed. So bring your super long charger. I ordered this one specifically for my delivery, also off of Amazon. I think I forgot to put something else in here. Oh, going home outfit. I packed, which I just can't find at the moment, but I packed a long maxi dress. I was told that you might not want to be bothered with tight pants after delivery, especially if you had a C-section. So I was told that it might be comfortable just to wear a nice loose gown home. But for me, it was raining and that was like a spaghetti strap dress. So it just was not about to look cute with my nursing bra and it was cold. So I ended up wearing my husband's like big baggy jacket over this long maxi dress. Probably wouldn't have worn that home if I had the option to change that now. I did pack some leggings and like a baggy t-shirt. That probably would have been a better option. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about the baby stuff. How long are we allowed to blame things on pregnancy brain once we're not pregnant anymore? <laughs> but I did bring a couple swaddles. I like the swaddles that came with the little matching uh, beanies, but these beanies, even though they're newborn, was way too big for our baby. Like they're not this big when they come out. So the beanie was a little <laughs> too large for him, but I did bring, I think at least two swaddles with me. And then I brought two outfits. I wanted this to be his coming home outfit, which says, welcome to the world. It's a little like pajama set with footsies and a matching beanie, but this was actually too big for him. So he didn't even go in here, even though he was eight pounds. And this is a newborn size. So that was a waste. The beanie was also like floating on his head, so this was too big. But the hospital does give you little clothes for the baby to wear. So this is like a little like vest shirt that he was in for majority of his newborn days. It has the cute little covers for his hands so he doesn't scratch his face, which I like. This little button makes it easy to take on and off. And then his diapers was just exposed, so you could change him easily as you're trying to figure things out. So the first couple days, even when he came home, we just put him in the same little outfit. They gave us like five of them. I did bring him another set that was like a smaller size, which he might have worn, but maybe not. I think we really just kept him in the hospital clothes for most of the time, but just took pictures and cuter swaddles. So I would say bring some matching swaddle sets that you want and maybe at least two outfits, but bring different sizes, something smaller and maybe something larger because you never know. I also made this welcome baby sign. This is also from Amazon. I pre-made all of this part, welcome baby, the baby's name, born. So once he came, I think I had a friend just pop on the correct date and time and pounds. And this is the cute little thing to have just for photos. Now one thing that I forgot to pack was 
my boppy pillow. This pillow became my best friend throughout my entire pregnancy. This is what I slept with, but I also used it during birth. I had someone actually go home and get it for me because the pillows at the hospital were just so uncomfortable. And I watched a bunch of hospital bag videos and many people said to bring your own pillow, but I was like, it's fine. Like, I'm not bougie over pillows. It's a pillow. I'm sure it's gonna be fine at the hospital, but it was very, very uncomfortable. It was like sleeping on a piece of paper. So I was so glad that I had my own pillow that was way more comfortable. And I even slipped my satin pillowcase over this, even though it's not the right, you know, size or shape at all. But I made it work and I was so glad to have my pillow. So bring a pillow. One pillow that I did not need that I did bring was this boppy pillow for breastfeeding. I was planning on just having this and learning how to breastfeed with my baby, but the doctors, nurses, and lactation consultants, they'll help you when it comes to trying to get the baby to latch for the first time. And we just ended up using pillows. So they're just gonna get a pillow, they're gonna fold it, and they're just gonna tuck it in there and you're gonna be comfortable with your baby. So I don't even really use this at home. It is convenient when I remember to bring it with me before I sit down, but it wasn't mandatory, especially at the hospital. It's just another big thing to bring. So I'd recommend bringing your own blanket and your own pillow, but you don't really need the breastfeeding pillow. And the last thing that I had in my hospital bag that is no longer here because it got eaten was snacks. I packed a couple of tangerines, some granola bars, a protein bar, some Chex Mix. And I think that was it. The hospital does feed you. So as soon as I got there, I got lunch. Then I got dinner later, they give you breakfast. They have like applesauce and jello. So if you need a snack, they have some for you. So my snacks were there if I needed them, but it wasn't like, I need food, there's nothing for me. If you are planning on getting an epidural, just remember you have to eat before you get it because once you get it, you can't eat anymore. So if you do bring snacks, eat them all before you get that epidural. So that is everything that was in my hospital bag. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. We post new videos every week to make your motherhood, parenting, child raising journey a little bit easier as we also figure this whole thing out. But I wanna know what are some things that you had in your hospital bag that you're just so happy you brought? Or what was the one thing that you forgot that you really wish you had. Please leave your experiences from if you had epidural, if you had a C-section, if you had vaginal birth, all those different factors might make what you pack different. So comment whatever you think we need to know in the comment section below so we can help all other mommies to be watching this video. Thanks for watching R&B fam. We'll see you guys next time.